Thanks all for joining this meeting and thanks uh, to everyone who watches it online. Today we have a special uh, uh, discussion about GitHub Checks API uh, project uh, uh, we have for Google Summer of Code this year. Uh, do you see my screen? Yep. Oh, cool. So, yeah, um, we have a project idea which basically is related to um, adding support of Checks API to Jenkins um, and uh, specifically being able to submit information uh, for warnings and G plugin and for code coverage API and maybe for other plugins related to static analysis uh, and just uh, various kinds of verification because this is where uh, we could get a lot of benefits for uh, from Checks API in Jenkins. And uh, we already got uh, a few um, proposals from students for this project, uh, which we are reviewing. So today uh, we just have an opportunity to do a QA and maybe to do some sync up with regards of what needs to be done, especially if uh, there are multiple students interested to work. Uh, so we could just use this time to see whether we could parallelize that or how we could uh, adjust the scopes. Uh, since we have multiple people on the call, and I guess not everybody knows everyone, we could uh, do quick introductions, especially uh, for Sumit, Sladin, and uh, those students who watch it. Mm. Ule, yeah, uh, I could begin. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So, uh, yeah. so I'm Sladin. Um, I've been working with Jenkins for the past, I mean, by five months, I guess. So with the Community Bridge project, so I, I was involved with um, Tim and um, Joseph in building the JSON schema generator for um, the JCASC. So I have a bit of knowledge about the uh, Jenkins ecosystem. I have been contributing in various areas like document migration, um, a bit of plugin, warnings plugin, maybe GitHub API and stuff. So yeah. Uh, so this time I plan to do my, uh, I plan to apply at least to <laughs> Google Summer of Code with Jenkins. I have submitted, uh, I guess, three proposals in different areas. Uh, one of them and my favorite is the GitHub Checks API. So yeah, that's about it from my introduction. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we started from students, Sumit, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Sumit. Uh, I'm also a prospective uh, GSOC student, um, but uh, my like uh, the uh, the proposal that I'm working on right now is the external fingerprint storage uh, proposal. So uh, maybe you can think of me as an observer on this meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for introduction, and maybe there could be st still some overlap between projects. Who knows? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So, anyone else? Maybe you, Ule, since you are not muted. Yeah. Uh, is there no student anymore? Okay. Um, I, yeah, I thought that there would be more, but yeah, let's hope yeah, somebody okay. watches online. So, my name is Uli. Uh, I'm the author of the warnings plugin. And yeah, I think some of the requirements are coming from my plugin. That's the reason we want to have this project. So um, I talked with a lot of users of my plugins and what they wish is to have some information from GitHub, uh, from, from the Jenkins job in GitHub. And that's the reason we are started this project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Jeff? Hi, um, my name's Jeff. Um, I'm a, a contributor to open source. This is my third year in involvement in GSOC. Um, I, I maintain a couple of plugins and I'm also the author of a plugin that um, provides build information via um, the GitHub status, uh, a commit status API, which is deprecated and, and also to um, ver various other dashboards. So it's kind of uh, in this area. So I'm, I'm interested in um, just, just monitoring in general and, and doing what I can um, to help move it forward. Plus, uh, Jeff was uh, a mentor in the Code Coverage API project. Uh, so he has insights about how it's organized and uh, it could be also helpful. 
Okay, so we have Keja on the call. Would you like to introduce yourself? Mm. Surprisingly, I can't really see chat when I'm screen sharing. Oh. Okay, sorry for late. Uh, I'm I'm Kezhi Xiong. You can call me Kezhi. I came from China, and uh, I'm interested in this project. I will try to um, wrote a, a project of concept, and I posted in our Gitter channel. And uh, I have contributed to the Warnings Next Generation plugin before, and also the GitHub uh, API for Java. And uh, uh, I, I want to participate in this project for this summer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for introduction. And we also have Rick on the call. Uh, Rick, you muted. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Rick, and I'm a contributor of Jenkins community. I also maintain several plugins. Uh, this is my second year uh, to participate in the GSOC. Um, currently, I'm focused on the uh, custom Jenkins build service proposal. Hope I can help the community. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Alec. I'm uh, one of uh, GSOC org admins. Uh, I started participating in GSOC in 2016 when we did the first uh, Google Summer of Code in Jenkins. And I'm really proud of this program. And I'm happy to create, uh, contribute however I can. Mm. And I'm a uh, very big fan of uh, GitHub Checks API. So if you get its uh, support for it in Jenkins, uh, it would be awesome. And uh, I will do my best to contribute and to share expertise when I can. Okay, yeah, so we've got quite a number of uh, people there and thanks all for the interest. Mm, I think we could uh, spend some time uh, Maybe only you as a lead member uh, would like to just summarize the project and uh, provide some overview if you would like. And then we could uh, go uh, to Coiny. So, um, I'm just looking if I can share my screen. Is this. Hmm. Yeah, I stopped sharing, so you should be able to share yours. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Never tried it. Um, um, okay, now it, is it sharing now? No. Yes, it is. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I think it, the the proposal is best described if you have a look at a typical pull request of Jenkins or one of the plugins. This is one of the Jenkins plugins, and this is a typical pull request where we have a lot of commits here and a lot of checks. And what we have here is some boxes in uh, this uh, pull request which are from other tools. Uh, this box here, for instance, is from Codacy. Uh, Codacy is an uh, online service where I can check my source code with CheckStyle, PMD, and several other tools. And they post some messages for each pull request here, for each line I'm modifying. For instance, here that I have done some code modifications which are not okay with regard to the rules that are configured by CheckStyle and PMD. Um, what we do in Jenkins, so I need to scroll to the bottom here, uh, we have here are the jobs uh, which are running after the pull request has been committed. And the last line or the, yeah, this line here uh, is uh, showing that Jenkins is building the 
uh, pull request. And this is the only message uh, what Jenkins is showing currently. So in order to see why this commit cannot be built, I need to click on the details and then Jenkins is opening its user interface. Um, the idea for my plugin users is that it would be much better if we run the Jenkins build and then push these notifications in this style here in form of a pull request so everybody sees which line has a new warning, etc. So this is, I think, the main idea behind the proposal from the user perspective. Uh, it would be nice to have warnings uh, for each pull request shown directly in the pull request and not, not only in Jenkins user interface. And if we extend this approach a little bit more, I think it makes sense to also show new test failures, a code coverage increase or decrease, and things like that. Uh, everything what is actually monitored in Jenkins would make sense to be presented in the pull request here. So nobody needs to uh, open the web interface of Jenkins. And if we think it a little bit more, maybe in a couple of years, Jenkins has no user interface at all. And it makes sense to just get the data from Jenkins and present it somewhere else. And one thing would be to show it here in the GitHub pull request. Yeah, and it's not uh, a miracle. Uh, there are already uh, some projects which have no web interface, for example, .ci in some sense, or Jenkins Cloud Runner, if you take something new and experimental. Yeah. So it could be definitely done, uh, and the Jenkins can operate in this mode. Yeah. So this is, I think, the, the view of the proposal from my uh, requirements view. So what needs to be done on the technical side to implement this? Um, actually, I don't know how to do it. So I know there is the API in GitHub, but I think uh, the students are already much deeper in that uh, part as I am. So I can't say much to the API itself in GitHub. And what needs to be done on the Jenkins side here? So I think for me, it is OK if has somebody some questions regarding the requirements here uh, I, I have i have a question about the uh, current status api and uh, i i want to know what's uh, your way to create this uh status api and I, I, because i saw many plugins can create this uh, status like the github plugin and uh, uh, some other plugins. Uh, I, I want to know what's the current uh, way to create this. You mean this thing here below? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, I don't know. It's uh, automatically generated for me. I'm just using a, the default Jenkins file. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if someone knows uh, how it is generated. So the the one that says this commit cannot be built, that's that's via the, the GitHub um, status status api which which is deprecated um the github actions i believe th that's the newer api that that they'd like us to to move to um and it i think it, it requires having a github application where um the the one with the little jenkins head continuous integration jenkins branch just requires that jenkins have the, um, the ability to write to a rest api so that that's uh, again the so the the continuous integration that's the one that GitHub says is deprecated and the the others are the new style that we want to move to. Does that make sense? And uh, I, I doesn't really answer your question. Yeah. Um, I I don't actually know how to write to the GitHub Actions API because I've never done yeah. it. <laughs> so. Uh -huh. I I could provide some insights on that. Uh, actually, if you um, if you kind of um, write an application and um, probably register it to the GitHub uh, application. If you go to the developer settings and actually create an app, um, GitHub actually lets you post certain um, certain events to the GitHub page. So as soon as you run that check or you run that application, um, GitHub automatically kind of uh, takes events from your app and posts them on you. So there are different kinds of events like on create, on complete, in progress and stuff. So as soon as you create, and as soon as you 
the pull request receives its first event, GitHub sends out the create webhook to all of the apps that are subscribed to the repository. So if you create an app and you subscribe it to the repository, um, GitHub sends out the create webhook and uh, your application can actually catch that webhook and uh, run a status check. So that's what uh, most of the actions or uh, apps do. They capture the create um, webhook, run the CI check, uh, mark the status in progress. And when it's completed, it posts the warnings and ends the check. So that's how the current workflow of the GitHub app works. So Kesey, were you asking about how the GitHub status notification works currently in Jenkins or was it about the GitHub app? Uh, I, I tried to create this status uh, using the GitHub API, but I, and I saw many other plugins can also create this status. So uh, I don't know what's a normal uh, usage to create this uh, status. So I just sent a link on the chat. Um, so I think each one um, extends the GitHub notification strategy class. Um, so it's an extension point. Um, and then you can send a notification through that. There's also the GitHub notification context, which is where, um, so there's a default message in the GitHub notification context, um, which is where it decides what it's going to send depending on the build result. So there's, inside the messages file, there's like 10 different um, texts that it was sent based on how it was um, based on the result. Um, and, and so yeah, different, different plugins can implement that strategy. Um, and I think there's also other plugins which just do it themselves as well um, to send ad hoc notification messages. Yeah, um, it's not exactly the state of the art. Also, there are several libraries for GitHub uh, API um, and uh, Jenkins uses GitHub API slash GitHub API. It's a project uh, which was originally created by Corsica and now thanks to team it supports uh, GitHub apps authentication and other components. And, yeah, I forgot to introduce team uh, in the beginning, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so yeah, if you would like to introduce yourself, it would be great. Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim. <laughs> Alex just seen me introduced me. Um, I use GitHub a lot. Um, um, I'm a maintainer of a few plugins in Jenkins, Slack, um, Azure Key Vault, configuration as code, um, and a Jenkins core maintainer as well. Um, you have fairly large Jenkins instance in my company that we use, um, but also quite a lot of Azure DevOps as well. So um, I see quite a few things there that would be quite useful in Jenkins. Um, the checks API and just being able to see summaries in your pull request and test results and rerunning sort of stuff. Um, and this would be a good start to make it easier to implement those features. Um, I've looked at implementing this before, but um, it was basically blocked for a very long time because um, GitHub API project um, wasn't released for almost a year. Um, it got stuck in transition between Kosuke and others. Um, and then final, finally, Liam is now taken over there. Um, so it's moving at a much high, much faster pace. And because of that, I was able to get the yeah, GitHub app authentication working for the GitHub branch source plugin. Um, so I think that should be quite useful for this. Um, as you shouldn't really have to worry about any authentication. It should be, should be hooked into the Jenkins credentials mechanism pretty easily. Um, and that should be released very soon. I, I hope. Um, yeah. I hope it will be released uh, next week. I guess now it's just a matter of clicking the release button because there is so much feedback uh, from users who built the plugin on their own and confirmed that it works. <laughs> For someone from Git, someone who works at GitHub who's messaged like three times on the pull request. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody has their own interests. Yeah. Uh, so. And yeah, like 10 plus companies using it in production, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we're using it with like 15 apps for like an organization that has about 1500 repositories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks a lot for overview and for some examples. 
do we want to discuss uh, the project details a bit more or should we go to Kone? Just screen share probably. Yeah, this is my screen. Does, it, does anybody have, have more details? I mean, I, I feel like part of the, the, pro, the process of developing the project is to maybe develop the details. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we can adjust the depth during uh, QA. So I think you could just proceed. So are there any questions? Slotin, mm -hmm. you're mostly muted. Yeah, actually, I wanted to um, ask one question. Um, yeah. I had a question regarding the code coverage API plugin. So, um, mm -hmm. the code coverage API plugin. So, how do we want the code coverage to be displayed? Um, because there are a few ways that currently, I think, code cover displays reports, oh. but code. Um, I think there is a plugin existing that just displays the coverage percentage. So, how do we want to proceed with that? Do we want because I don't think the checks API supports uh, reporting coverage, coverage reports, but the GitHub pull request review comments does allow you to post reports. So how, the, how do we want to proceed that we want to replace reports or just the percentage of code coverage? For me, one of interesting use cases we had a, in previous systems. So it was actually team foundation server uh, long before it uh, went uh, online. Uh, so we will get in warnings um, in our change requests about uh, code coverage uh, issues, uh, particularly about uh, parts of the new code which is not covered uh, by tests. And uh, if it was displayed uh, via checks API, you could just put uh, information to the lines and say that, hey, this block is not, not covered, uh, do something about that. It would be the first obvious use case for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. I think I can, I shared a link in the, I don't know whether it's in the chat. Can I just paste it here? Um, yeah, you can edit this doc. Yeah, um, let me. Um, I think what I can show you is uh, how another tool in GitHub uh, is uh, sh showing the code coverage, uh, which I'm also using. Okay, just show it. Okay, so. So uh, this is uh, another pull request of my plugin. And here, uh, what I'm using is code coverage uh, or the code cuff, uh, this tool, I don't know. Mm -hmm. how want to call it and this tool is uh, computing the code coverage uh, from the change and yeah this is not really interesting because this is just a dependency uh, that changed but normally the, here you see which kind of uh, coverage you have uh, changed in the, in the positive or in the negative way and then you see some difference and you see for instance what has detailed change. So I think we can do something similar from the code coverage API. Um, does, does this one delta report? Th this one publish it to a, 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 another service, like a code cub external service? Yeah, this is an external okay. service. I'm pushing the, uh, uh, I think, Chacoco results to their mm -hmm. server and they are computing a delta. And this delta they are showing here in the pull request. And you can, uh, normally you can put some thresholds where you can say, okay, you, you should not go lower with a percentage, then otherwise the pull request will fail. Or the check will fail, not the pull request. It's interesting. Oh, okay. it, it almost yeah. feels like um, it would be great if this solution was extendable so that it could maybe 
uh, publish information from different places because you know some people probably would want to use that code cup service some some people might not so maybe there'd be some different options or different ways to extend it yeah I guess the code coverage API plugin does support some report generation. I'm not, I did some research on it, but I guess they support two of two or three, Jacoco and Colbert, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so supports, I guess, yeah. 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 So uh, Jacoco, it supports Cobertura. So the plugin uh, Jeff uh, maintained. I'm not sure, Jeff, do you maintain Cobertura plugin now? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it maybe supports LLVM as well. It, it does. It was released. Yeah. Uh, plus, uh, there were some experiments with hardware code coverage plugins, yeah. but it hasn't happened yet. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not sure, um, you, you know, what what other companies do, but but in practice, what I've seen um, is that um, all, almost all of the coverage that we gather gets converted to the Cobertura because, like, I've, I've done a lot a lot in in um, Node Node JS, and we're doing GoLang right now, and and all of those, and and even Python. There's ways to convert it to Cobertura and then publish that. So, so it tends to be kind of a common format. Ish, mm -hmm. and at, at least in my experience. Yeah, uh, we used uh, such approach a lot. Um, and actually there is a lot of converters until the very recent time, it wasn't possible to publish, for example, coverage for C++ uh, code in Jenkins without conversion uh, through Cobertura format. There is a project called uh, Gcover. Uh, also, we were publishing uh, hardware code coverage um, using Cobertura reports uh, again, uh, but uh, it's uh, still a, a partial use case because Cobertura format is far from being ideal, though it uh, provides basic information. Yeah, and it's, it's also pretty Java centric, so you're um, kind of like trying to fit results from whatever you are into sort of a, a Java framework. So sometimes the results are, are funny, but I mean, we, we just care mostly about line coverage. And so that, that's pretty easy to get from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what, yeah, so uh, probably the, the code coverage API plugin could, I does it, I believe it does have some more extension points. So um, they do publish some of the reports. So maybe the GitHub Checks API plugin could make use of those reports to, uh, I mean, pass those reports and probably generate some sort of reports that are much more useful to be displayed in GitHub pull requests. So I guess I've posted, posted a link on the, uh, on the document. Maybe uh, this is a parser that currently exists. Uh, I'm not sure if this, some of the heavy lifting can be done by this, um, but yeah, this is what I was researching and I mentioned in my proposal as well. So yeah, that's just mm -hmm. my two cents on it. Okay. Uh, I think one plugin which should also report something is the JUnit plugin. So if someone in a pull request fails a test, it would be very helpful if the test failure would also shown in the pull request. So currently Jenkins says, yeah, it failed. And then I need to go to Jenkins to see where it failed. And it would be much better if we also have the JUnit plugin report at least the failures in the pull request. Well, would that make for you sense as well? Uh, I, I, I I, I think that would be be useful in, in our experience because a, a lot of people that I, I work with, one of the things they don't like about Jenkins is having to to click through the link and go figure out what failed. And and so the more information that we could have on the pull request page, the happier people would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, I agree with it. Uh, just one comment for students. Uh, yeah, there are many opportunities. There is no need to do everything in three months. And uh, if you wish, the work could be paralyzed, uh, but uh, it's yet to be discussed. And uh, just make sure you, your proposal is something uh, which is uh, implementable from your point of view. And then we can discuss many of these options. Yeah, I saw many the potential milestone in the uh, project proposal of the checks API. And should we include all those milestones in our uh, project? 
this summer? You mean uh, these milestones, right? Yes, yes. It's especially the general API for pull requests to, for the other platforms, the, the third one. And I don't know whether this is feasible because uh, I'm, I'm not so familiar with uh, GitLab or Bitbucket. And I don't know whether they have some, uh, some uh, mechanisms like the checks. Not always. Uh, I guess the keyword here is possible. So what we do in okay. Jenkins, we offer uh, wide open project ideas so that students could research them, explore the area and come up with uh, their proposals. And uh, they get a lot of freedom of what uh, they can propose. Uh, we start from there. So uh, Uli, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that uh, all items here are just examples of what could be yeah. done. These are actually examples. I, I think it's... It, uh it is a good project which can be done very incrementally. So we can start with a simple check that prints some hello world <laughs> from Jenkins and then maybe a warning. And then I think it's up to the student in which direction we are going. And it's also really hard to decide now which are the milestones. Okay. So, 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 I, so, uh, so I have wrote some undeliverables in my proposal. And so, I, so I'm not sure whether those uh, can be um, implemented or, or achieved later. And so these, uh, do these deliver, deliverables can be um, discussed and uh, changed later? Um, so what you do now, uh, you do a project proposal. And we totally understand that uh, we cannot commit uh, to the scope right now because uh, their proposal uh, may change, the environment may change, and we, there may be obstacles that discovered. So it's pretty much like an any software project. And uh, right now, yeah, you work on the proposal. Uh, we want uh, it to be feasible, but still mm -hmm. there may be a lot of changes uh, during the project itself. For example, during community bonding, we usually ask uh, project teams to work on a mini design based on the uh, original proposal so that uh, you review your proposal together with mentors, see what uh, could be done in a different way, what needs to be done, what could be excluded, what would be the order. So you would work the project together and basically start working after that and the uh, final project plan may differ from the original proposal. So we do not consider students to be committed to, fully committed to what uh, is listed in the deliverables. Of course, we want uh, it to be somehow aligned. So don't expect the situation when you come uh, get accepted and then uh, people say you that you do completely different project. No, it's not going to happen. It will be a discussion between teams and we want uh, to have proposal along these lines. But uh, if something changes, uh, it happens. And basically okay. our approach is as long as mentors are happy with the result, uh, we are happy as an organization. Okay. Yeah, sometimes uh, there are really interesting results and deviations. So for example, when we were working with Shin Yu together with Jeff in 2018, I believe the original scope of the project was completed in mid-June or something like that. And then we were exploring slightly different areas, though overall it was a really successful project. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, such things happen. Uh, please don't be afraid about that. But uh, still think what you would like to work on and uh, what would be your personal interests and priorities. So if you're concerned about this item, if you don't really want to work on that, uh, you can uh, find something else or you could just put it uh, to the tentative uh, area for the future discussion. I'm not sure. What uh, do others think about uh, this uh, general API? I mean, I'm, I'm always a fan of having APIs that can be used by other plugins. Um, what, um, I, I think that maybe the mentors or, or the community could help 
flesh out at least what the interface would look like. Um, that's the that's general, and maybe we only implement it for GitHub, but but the interface is defined, so somebody can add the others later. Mm -hmm. Ole team. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think. Yep. Um, I have a demo to present. Can I have like five minutes of the call to maybe show some demo? Mm, why not? If there is no other questions, we could definitely spend some time on that. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any questions, uh, especially from Akeja? Not okay, let's uh, do a demo. Yep, uh, can I share my screen? Yes, please go ahead. Yep, just let me know when my screen is visible. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. It's not required, not required. So um, what I did was in my proof of concept that I wrote uh, for the uh, Jenkins for the plugin, um, what I did was just a, so I think the warnings plugin generates a sort of, um, it generates a warnings report. So I just took a basic warning report that's generated. Um, just give me a second and just find it out. Hold on a second. Yeah. So I just took a basic warning report. That's a static warning report. And on the basis of that report, uh, since obviously there is no dynamism involved, I'm not making any call to the Jenkins um, uh, report or something, uh, warnings plugin. So what I did was this was the kind of report that was generated. So um, it can show you the line number, the file name, the line start, line end and stuff. And uh, I wrote the a Spring Boot application that can, that is basically registered as a GitHub app currently. So this GitHub application does what uh, it parses the warning report and for whatever pull request that you generate, whatever pull request that you generate, it shows a kind of, it shows you what kind of warnings have been generated. So if I take a look at uh, some of the warnings that have been generated here, so I'll show you an example. So if you look at the warnings uh, report here, it's just a static warnings report. So it doesn't make sense though. Um, it can show you the message. So the, um, it may fail to clean up Java input stream or return value of report get okay so you get the gist of it so these are the kind of uh, warnings that have been generated so currently there are only three warnings generated so um what i did was i wrote a uh, the app and registered it with github so github runs it so if i can show you a demo so this is the uh, this is just a test file that i've uh, written it's just copy pasted from uh, from one of the free available freely available repository so it just doesn't just ignore what's written in it but what is important here is um so I've, I've registered the app on a particular repository. So if you have a look, um, I have the sandbox repository. So this is just a blank repository. And uh, what I will do is I will push a pull request to this. So uh, I'm going to push this to my, um, just hold on a second. So I'm going to push it to my test file six. Yeah, so this should uh, probably open a pull request here. Just give me a second. That's not happening. Just going to take a second. Yeah, so this should. What is wrong? Okay, did nothing get pushed to the. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad, not committed. this would probably allow me to uh, yeah open a pull request so this is probably where the uh, the so my app is running so what happens is it receives a commit and um, if you have a look here it actually just give me a second I'll, um, send in the 
to check from here. Yeah. So if you have a look at the checks plugin, that kind of displays this warning. So if I have a look at some of the pull requests here, it actually successfully uh, displays some of it. So uh, if you look at the earlier pull request that I opened, so it publishes it like this. So you have the warnings in the line. So whatever bot we have or whatever app we write later for the warnings plugin, it will kind of display whatever warnings we have after invoking the, after getting the report of the file that we have generated. So whatever file we pass into the warnings plugin, it probably has a, um, I mean, it probably puts it on to the pull request comment. And the other way that we could probably do it is using the checks, uh, um, the checks UI. So the checks UI is this way. So if whatever, wa whatever warnings we've opened up here, they show up like this. So we could either take that approach or we could either take this approach that it just displays the warnings on the checks plugin, or it goes ahead and displays the warnings onto the conversation. Now the conversation could become very cluttered because of this, because uh, the, there might be 20, 30, 40, 50 warnings. Uh, GitHub checks API limits it to currently 50 for a time, but yeah, so this could probably be um, one way of displaying the pull request warnings. So yeah, this was um, the demo that I wrote. This was a proof of concept that I wrote. So this could be, I think Tim has worked on the authentication of it. So that could probably be reused. And um, since I've already used the GitHub, I've not made use of the um, GitHub API and I've written some of the um, functions on my own. So yeah, uh, that certainly could be reusable. But yeah, um, I just wanted to um, kind of display the proof of concept since um, we plan to display warnings on the pull request. So this kind of makes use of the warnings report that are generated. So the warnings, um, the plugin uh, could develop, could be extended, could have an extension point, and um, this could be connected to that. So currently it's just a static warning, but um, yeah, this was this would probably be, uh, I think, step one or a, just a basic proof of concept. Yeah, uh, that's about it. So yeah, that's my time. Yeah, thanks for the demo. So. Yeah, maybe one question we could uh, discuss uh, today. So yeah, we have uh, two proposals. Um, then yeah, we had such cases uh, before. So when uh, there are two good proposals, uh, there are actually multiple ways how to resolve for this situation. Uh, oh, hi, Preeti. Um, yeah, uh, so there are uh, multiple ways. One way, basically, a kind of competition, so that uh, whatever best uh, possible proposal wins, but uh, it's not the only way, uh, because it's an open source project. Uh, we deliberately try to keep as much information as possible in the public, and we encourage students to collaborate with each other. And for example, if you're interested to work together and see whether it could be somehow uh, the conflicted so that we could have uh, two proposals which are more uh, which uh, operate in the same area but can be delivered separately uh, then it would be also possible so uh, just something to think about um, and uh, if you want to discuss it more we have time and yeah basically it's uh, for all projects if uh, you are concerned about a competition or whatever, uh, see whether you could convert the competition to collaboration. Okay. Yeah, I would be up for it. Collaboration sounds like a mm -hmm. really cool idea. Yeah, I have no issues mm -hmm. in, um, yeah, in setting up, maybe in collaboration, we could work in parallel for the project. Maybe one could focus on maybe the some other set of plugins like code coverage or something like that, and one could focus on the warnings and stuff. Um, sounds like a cool idea. I would be it's definitely a, open to that. It uh, might be possible. So obviously it depends on the number of slots we have on other applications, etc. But uh, yeah, we encourage students to explore these options if you're interested. And uh, yeah, highlight students. So we could probably do it as mentors, uh, but uh, we can just provide guidance. Uh, we won't be doing this, the conflicting uh, for yourself. 
because if you expect to work together in the future, it's better to see whether it's possible now. Uh, but yeah, technically these options are possible. So is that left up to the mentors to decide or to the students? Okay, any comments, insights, maybe some hints from others? No idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it seems like it's it's both, right? Um, it, it's a the it's um the the mentors agreeing that there's um there's enough work for two people to work on it, and and I, I guess also the um the students con convincing us that there's enough work to to have two projects, right? Because it's like like one one G GLC project. It's three months of coding, so. Um, if if we could collaborate and and get six months of coding in three months, then it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sets uh, some additional requirements to projects, but technically it's possible. And uh, there are cases when uh, there was successful collaboration. We didn't have such example in our organization so far, though. Yeah, we had uh, students uh, closely collaborating with each other, but uh, uh, because, for example, uh, in uh, areas like JCASC where there was overlap, uh, but yeah, you, you didn't have uh, cases for a single project idea per se. But other organizations uh, did have them, and they say that it actually works pretty well. Hmm. Mm -hmm. do, do we have two students or, or three interested in this this project? So we received uh, uh, two project proposals now, but the uh, number of students uh, in the end will be known only after 31st of uh, March. So yeah, we have uh, Preeti Sharma on the call, we have Sumit. Maybe Sumit uh, watched the discussion and decided, hey, now I want to work on uh, Czech's API, who knows? And maybe other students uh, will submit, let's see. So we do not know the number, and uh, yeah, the yeah, multiple uh, um, uh, potential uh, situations, uh, and, uh, but we will figure out it uh, in April while doing a uh, proposal uh, processing. So from an, an org standpoint, if there was a possibility of collaboration, would we just submit the single collaborative project and, and not the two individual ones, or we submit all three? No. Uh, all proposals should be submitted individually, okay. and all proposals should be deliverable uh, separately, and they should be uh, measurable separately. Why it's important? Because yeah, life happens, uh, and especially this year with all this uncertainty around, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Not speaking about uh, the JSOC time frame, so that's why yeah, there is a strong requirement from Google that uh, projects could be delivered separately. Obviously, there might be some uh, conditional uh, etc., but technically, it's uh, it might be possible. But yeah, each proposal should be submitted separately and uh, it should be evaluated separately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for this detour to the project and organization side. Uh, do we have any questions about the technical side of these projects? About the implementation, about uh, areas to explore, anything? Uh, I want to talk about my implementation. Okay. Uh, and I use, uh, can you uh, show the workflow graph in my proposal? Um, oh, uh, yeah, I can show it for you. Okay, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have implemented the uh, most of workers in the listeners, um, and and after the GitHub has sent the request for a checks, uh, for, for a checks round, and the 
uh, my subscribe subscriber will uh, subscribe the event and it has contains a message key. So later when the uh, listener uh, was triggered uh, like by a uh, Jenkins Brown, I'm triggered by on um, initialize as you can see on the on the graph, uh, it will request the uh, check through event from the message query in the uh, event subscriber uh, and it will uh, then um, I have I have implemented some extension points and other plugins can extend this uh, this extension points and to provide information like summaries, conclusions, and I'll um, I'll I'll gather those informations um, just like uh, uh, searching in the, in the extension list and get all these uh, plugins informations um, and then send and then create the check rounds. Um, and as you can see in later, I, I will do almost the same thing on start or on complete. And I just, I just have a problem with my implementation for now uh, because the uh, uh, event um, is independent from the Jenkins Brown. So, uh, so there is a situation that the, maybe the, uh, the Jenkins Brown has started, but we haven't received the GitHub event. So, of uh, for this situation, we can't uh, create those uh, uh, create and uh, create runs. Yes, I I don't know how to handle this situation. I don't know whether you have understand me. I kind of understand, but I think it'd be nice if you could give an example um, of when that happens and what the events are, just to tie it, just to just to help um, focus it more. Uh, I've implement. I have wrote a section about the flaws on my proposal. Uh, it's, I, I I think it's a bit later. Can you show show us or uh, can you help me, Oleg? Yeah, just uh. Yes, it's at the up up a little. Uh, in the in the front front. Uh, uh in so the front. Uh, no, the the, the last. Last one, the previous one. This one. The pre, the previous one, the previous one. The previous one. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit lost. Uh, uh, sh should should I go to go up or down? Go upper, go upper. Okay. Upper. And go upper. Yes, yes, the floors. Oh, and sorry. Ten. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh. I have uh like uh, uh like yeah in this uh, uh I, I don't know whether you have so, read so my proposal. That, do you mean that the check suite hasn't been created on the GitHub side yet? Yes, yes. We have to receive the created uh request like which contains the uh, uh, information for the created check around, like the ID, so we can later update this check around using the ID uh, from GitHub, or we can't create any uh, check arounds. So that's my current problem. Right. Wait, need any more time to look into it? Um, on what the best way? Yeah, I started reviewing uh, the proposal, but I didn't touch uh, the Chex API uh, workflow part. I think that we can uh, define it later, but uh, yeah. if you need feedback now, I will try to take a look over the weekend. Uh, I, uh, maybe I, I could later provide an example about this. Mm -hmm. uh, for and we can discuss later if you can understand the uh, for now. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can start a job in Jenkins from the GitHub API? Yeah, so just looking at the um, suite here, it says that by default it will create one for you, but you can create your own as well. But normally it's uh, it's uh, create check rounds after. Uh, normally, when you pull uh, when you open a pull request, it will it will um, 
uh, automatically create the check suit and will ask you for some check rounds. So you just need to uh, create check rounds. Yeah, uh, this, it does, it does also say that you can create your own one as well. Yes, yes. Would that help? Uh, I think, yes, uh, that, that could help. I, I haven't tried this uh, approach. Uh, I, can, I can try it later. Yeah. Actually, that check run is probably the, the check suit that uh, the pull request passes could be is very, very useful um, in actually posting back because that the check suit event basically sets up your entire pipeline. So that's the first event you receive as soon as you open a pull request. So moment you hit the pull request, bang, you get a check suit and uh, you can actually on the basis of that check suit start your entire pipeline. So I guess Tim has made that part. I think Jenkins as a GitHub app has already been implemented, right, Tim? Um, it's just the authentication. It's just the only bit that is implemented is getting the bearer token that you need to pass to the API. Okay, so um, yeah, if, if if that's possible, because if Jenkins as a GitHub app is possible, then um, it makes this part very, very simple because then the warnings plugin and the code coverage API plugin just need extensions because um, the app will generate a token for every organization or every repo that's enabled in. So yeah, it makes it much, much easier if Jenkins as an app gets delivered quite easily. I don't know if that's a prerequisite for this project, but yeah, if that's there, then it makes the project a whole lot easier. Yeah, um, one comment, uh, we slightly go over time and uh, there is um, another meeting we should be happening now. Uh, so my proposal uh, would be to take through the discussion uh, offline and yeah, if potential mentors could take a, a look at this proposal and at the proposal by sliding and uh, if other proposals are submitted, your feedback uh, will be appreciated. And we can also continue this discussion in chat yeah, I believe that we need to release um, the Zoom account. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, again, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, and uh, I will make sure to post the video within a couple of hours. So once it gets processed by Zoom, so that everybody can process it. Yep, plus one. Okay. Thanks all and have a great uh, weekend. Thanks everyone for attending, really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Bye.